All right, Shalom. I want to start by giving all praise and glory unto you. How about Shema, our Shah, by Shema, Kakodash, the body of the apostle and others, a great millstone. Shalom on Tyler, I commend the preaching word and sincerity and truth. Yeah, and I just want to do this lesson on um, don't let, your, don't let your emotions put you in air. You know, um, you don't want to be over emotional in this truth. You know, each and every one of us, which is obvious, has emotions. But what uh, distinguishes us. You know, because it's really levels to everything. It's, it's how certain brothers, um, you know, retain a level of self-possession, you know, self-control by concealing their emotions at certain times. And certain brothers that over -ex overly express themselves and show themselves to be over overly emotional. You know, you've heard you've heard that term. No, no, plenty of brothers heard that, of course, over emotional N might not go to them personally, but. You may have had to tell a brother that, you know, at times you you show yourself as being over emotional, you know, which is not a good thing. It's not a good characteristics characteristic to have to, um, you know, be, you know, filled up with emotion and you letting your emotions take full control over you rather than um, balancing logic and reasoning. You know, the scriptures speak about uh, balance. It speaks about, um, you know, counsel. It speaks about, you know doing certain things um without letting your uh, emotions you know take the uh, take the front seat and you see that this world is governed by emotional men emotional women if you look at the prison prison uh, center prison system you see majority of those men uh you know be the, some of the biggest guys but they go overboard and they do some of the mo most emotional shit you know, and uh, it, it in most cases it'll be a, a rage whether it's dealing with a woman, or, or Jake might have uh, you know lacked self control, and they've been had a, a case by case situations that show that they don't have uh, their emotions down on lock, and then they it's it's one thing that trigger it's a trigger point that that you know spirals their emotions out of control and they'll probably pick up a gun and shoot one individual or shoot multiple individuals. You know, um, you know, kill their, their the wives, kill their children, you know, uh, drive themselves up, commit suicide, go off of a cliff, you know, because even those go into emotions, depressional, depression and stuff like that. Their emotions being extremely sad. They're not knowing how to pick themselves up and think logically, you know, and, and ration, ration things, ration themselves out. And, and even uh, when you're dealing with rational thinking, you know, you have to ration out these emotions, man. You know, you have to take these emotions with a grain of salt because you could be sad today and you could be happy tomorrow, man. So you can't let, you know, this current moment of th grief that you might go through uh, govern your whole life. You know, and that's the, the, the type of mentality that a lot of these, you know, children have, a lot of these people have in, in 2021. It's, it's a real emo culture, man. You know, real you know, dark outlook, real pessimistic, you know, just just always uh, having that down in the dump mentality. The, the Lord doesn't want us to have that down in the dump mentality. You know, this truth is about being up to, you know, it's, it's about, you know, spiritually positive, having an optimist, optimistic point of view, understanding that the kingdom of heaven is right around the corner. So we should, um, you know, be elated. But um, it's, under the word emotional, I'm going to jump to the main point under, uh, it says, of a person having feelings that are easily excited and openly displayed. Right. So you don't want to be easily excited and you don't want to display yourself openly at all times. You know, the truth speaks about concealing yourself, you know, concealing your knowledge. It's going to speak about even a fool when he holdeth his tongue it's, it's counted wise. So a lot of times whenever you go through certain things, you got to know how to uh, restrain yourself, restrain your sadness, sometimes even hold back your happiness, man. You know, and with sometimes with being over over emotional, you you tend to say a lot of things that you have to uh, initially retract on, you know. Or w another thing that happens is a lot of men will, uh, that's over emotional, they tend to say a lot of things and then when getting confronted and acknowledged and, and reproved on it, they, they tend to double down, you know, because what their emotions are, are, you know, are taking full control. And then when you tell a man that he's emotional, you know, 
your pride starts to set it. And that's why it tells you that in the book of Sirach that, you know, the start of the, the pride, when the pride starts, when the man starts to fall away from his maker. So you start to, uh, you know, throw logic out the window and, and you start to just go off of, um, you know, your emotions and what it says, feelings that are easily excited and openly dis displayed. And that's that's the devil's playground, man. When he see that your feelings can be easily um, swayed from left and right, the scriptures speak about that. You know, let's not be like children willing to and fro. fro. It, it, to and fro really deals with uh, emotions, man. You know, and it, uh, of course it deals with not having a, you know, a level of pure knowledge that can anchor you. So Satan, through his, um, you know, false reasonings and things of that nature, he could throw you off off your uh, your train tracks. But like I was saying, that, that's that's the emo that's the uh, ingredients for the devil to, uh, you know, be like a, uh, you know, like a controller. Like if you see somebody that uh, like vent ventriloquist, certain people that know how to uh, control puppets and things of that nature. You know, it's, it's all about having the strings on those puppets. And they can they can move their mouth, they can move their arms, they can move their um, you know, their legs, their their extremity, you know, ex extremities so to speak, to the point where they they're they're animated, and they're all under the control of the of uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, the individuals are called the ventriloquists, you know, or the puppet master. So you don't want to be puppeted by the ways of this world or puppeted by your emotions. You know, you have to be anchored and governed by knowledge wisdom and understanding all right so this is proverbs 12 and 23 a prudent man concealeth knowledge but the heart of fools proclaim foolishness right so as a um as a man you know and a man of prudence you have to conceal yourself it's times where you conceal knowledge and we know how excited we are about the wisdom knowledge and understanding of your how but it's sometimes where this knowledge is um shouldn't be openly displayed. You're telling, you know, each and every, you know, you know, person you know, or if you met, the, yeah, I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite, did you know about the Israelite? That's that's something that, that somebody that's, um, you know, like a like a happy dog, like a dog that's wagging his tail con constantly, you know, those little pug dogs and things of that nature, you know, just all over the place. And it's truth, the, the more you grow and the, um, more wisdom that you retain you, you you know how to be centered and governed governed by this wisdom knowledge and understanding you know it's also written in proverbs uh, 4 and 12 excuse me 4 and uh, 7 how uh you know it speaks about wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all that getting get understanding you know and then as a byproduct you know you're gonna feel the grief you're gonna feel you know it's good to speak about you know, as you gain wisdom, you know, you're going to gain sorrow, but you know how to control that sorrow. You know how to deal with those different things. That's the burdens of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, he was, uh, he had emotions. He had sad times when you read in, the, you know, him and his, uh, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and stuff like that. You know, you've seen that Yahweh Shah had emotional times, you know, where his emotions were displayed, but he still anchored itself by the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh by Shem or or Yahweh. All right, the Mosa. It says, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Claimeth foolishness. All right. That's why it says that a openly uh a open display of basically um you know feelings. You know, I feel this way, I feel that way. I feel you know that's why you gotta even watch and check yourself, you know as well as certain brothers that always have, I feel, I feel this, I feel that. That's, you know, but did, did the scripture say that? Do you have a scripture to back that up? If not, you're going off of what? Your emotions. So Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Right. So it you have to take a step back and, and let this, this, this uh, word rule over you and your decisions in the world. You know, because it's times where your emotions get tested, too. It's always a, a testing ground. It's always temptations. It's always trials that's going to try to put you in a spirit of, um, you know, being pissed off. You know, getting angry, getting agitated, you know, feeling sad. You know, your emotions get uh, pulled on a daily, man. And like I said, we're not, we definitely don't put it out there like we're just, 
you know, men that don't have any emotions whatsoever. We all have emotions. Emotions lie within us, but it's about having a level of self, um, self-control over your emotions. All right. Kings, righteous men in the scriptures, you see that when they had to make uh, judgment calls, they didn't let emotions get in the way. You know, whether it was a family member, hell, it was times where you had to uh, stone certain family members, man. Now, did they let their emotions get in the way? No. They let logic take the front seat. So logic and reasoning is, is extremely important. All right, that's the most important thing that a man is governed by. And then you see, even at times, women will tend to sh try to give you counsel and you've seen that, you know, with, you know, of course, whether you're in a relationship, you know, or, or things of that nature, or when you was younger, you know, you'll, you'll do something and, you know, the father logically wants to whoop your ass, but what the mother usually jumps in the way or she'll say certain things to impose on the father's logic to try to make him think from an emotional standpoint so that he'll resist the, um, the will of whooping up on your ass, but you know, and, and you've, you've, you've been taught that way, you know, you've been taught to tap into emotions rather than logic because, you know, your, your mother has instilled that in you. And it's times where it's like, shit, those, those ass whoopers were necessary, you know, even receiving them and sometimes even giving them as a father and things of that nature. So even taking them. So knowing the things that you have to take and not being over emotional, even with things that you have to, uh, you know, receive, you know, whether the Lord, you know, puts the hammer down on you and stuff like that. You got to um, know how to take that from a logical standpoint too. you know, take it and understand scripture speak about. Let us, uh, you know, not be uh, uh, roughly paraphrasing, just speaking about being a uh, men of uh, uh, understanding, you know, understanding be men. That's it. So in, in, in this understanding of, of, of the Lord, we have to be men in this understanding. We can't be, be women. We can't be children. You know, like I said, children tossed to and fro. We got we to gotta stand upon these principles and we have to think and always ponder on the thoughts of the Lord when we go through our griefs and go through our situations. All right. No matter how much these emotions want to pop up and want to make you want to cry or, or, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term, excuse my French, but bitch up, you know. The Lord, the Lord's not dealing with that spirit. You know, the Lord's dealing, you know, like this is, this is a, this is a man's book. This is man's logic. So, so entering into the, uh, you know, the course of, of this truth, you have to deal with the uh, logic. And like I said, with reasoning, Ecclesiastes 7 and uh, 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Right. And one of the main things about this truth is about exercising the uh, the uh, spirit of, of patience. The word patience means to suffer. When you go through the things that you go through, you got to suffer it, man. All right. The Lord tells us to suffer in, all throughout the scripture. Suffer patiently, man. All right. Take your time with it. Don't don't, um, you know, don't get don't get big headed. You know, like I said, don't get overly depressed. Because the Lord does put pressure down on you, you know, because what uh, says, uh, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. And, and uh, oppression, you know, when it when it deals, I think it means the extractor of gold, because um, back in um, back in the day, you would have people that would uh, like governments and rulers, leaders that would oppress the poor and they would have them mining for uh, substance. So when you put you know, down pressure on, on, on people, you can uh, use their will to what? Reap the benefits of, of the land. Now, we're likened unto that land spiritually. So when pressure is put down on us, we start to see, hey, as the saying goes, pressure of uh, bus pipes and, and pressure, uh, you know, creates diamonds. So we have to be that gold that's tried in the fi fire and tried through the furnace of, of adversity rather than letting oppression and things of that nature makes us over emotional and lack reasoning and judgment so be verse 9 be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry for anger resteth in the bosom of 
bosom of fools, right? So this thing, you have times where you get angry, you know, but you can't let it rest within you, all right? Like understanding who your enemy is. Of course, you know, we're angry about the atrocities that Esau's done, you know. Hey, but when we st stand to him face to face, we're not going to be full of anger. When you read about Yahweh Shai, or, or even if we are full of anger, we're going to know how to conceal, conceal the matter. All right. When you read about Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai wasn't wasn't just, you know, spurring out of control when he was, in, you know, basically in cuffs and was being prosecuted. When you read about Paul, when you read about the disciples, hey, man, man, you got them devils, man. Yeah, yeah. Foaming at the mouth. You see that they was praising Yahweh by Shema was shot. Because what? Their logic was uh, kicking in rather than their emotions. And they knew that they was at the point of death. So we have to emulate, you know, and duplicate that same mentality that our forefathers had within us throughout, throughout whether it's the course of our day or through these uh, major trying times. Because what? When we go through things in our everyday, those are like many, uh, many trials, you know, many tests that we have to go through. Before we have to, you know, go through the major test. All right. So, you know, this was just going to be a short lesson. Just wanted to speak on that. Just not letting emotions throw you off. Let emotions throw you, put you in air. And always let your how about Shema Shah's words step in, you know, and take the front seat in, in each and every course of action. All right. So I want to end by giving all praise and glory unto your how about Shema Shah by Shema Kakodash. Dabana to the Apostle of the Great Millstone. Shalom Omar.